The visual hierarchy and prioritization of your messages is critical. These are some of my favorite email tips to drive revenue. So splitting your database. Again, I think this is probably something that's not news to anybody, but if you create relevant content for one audience, the likelihood of that open rate is going to skyrocket. The likelihood of that call to action is going to skyrocket. So just try thinking about a couple of key different segments of your audience. They could be location-based. They could be um, interest-based. They could be, um, there are a lot of different ways that you can segment your database. Members, non-members is a really easy one too. So just look at segmenting your database. And that doesn't mean you have to complete create completely separate content for both of them. What we do a lot of times is we create one email, one template, and then we just change like a couple of pieces of copy throughout the text. That's it, that's all you have to do. Um, and that makes it a member email versus a non-member email. It can look the same, the design can be the same, change the subject, change the header, make sure they know you're talking to them specifically. This is the tip that can get you 760% increase in revenue. This is the one. So if you don't do anything else, like, and you're looking to drive revenue, this will change your world. Send abandoned cart emails for anybody that has an online flow where you put something into a cart. Um, these people are highly engaged and they almost made a purchase from you. So I know in today's world, we all put things in carts that we may or may not have intentions of buying. Um, that's a fact, right? But at the same time, I put it in my cart because I wanted to consider it for later. So I'm at least there. That's one way that customers can tell us, hey, I'm interested in you. I'm interested in this product. Make sure that you're sending that automated, if you can, the automated abandoned cart email that says, hey, you left this in your cart. Do you want to come back and get it? It's really easy. Just one click. Um, the easier you make it for them, the more, um, the more engagement you're going to get. There was someone that said that they were scrambling to keep up and I totally feel you <laughs> and understand. Create a content calendar. I know that it's, um, again, this is very basic and you might already be doing this, but I promise you it will help. If you plan ahead and create that calendar, um, then you're going to be able to build crescendos. So marketing campaigns should be thought of like a music or a piece of music or a movie. You don't want to be shouting at people all the time. They're just going to tune you out, right? So if you build to a crescendo, find your softer moments, find your harder moments, like looking at just revenue and just open rates and just click-through rates. Again, we're going to talk about that in the next section with analyzing and optimizing, but just looking at all of like having that be your main metrics all the time, you can't always be shouting. You can't always be 50% off. You can't always have it be the most important thing, right? So find the times that you're like, you're okay with open rates and click-through rates going down a little bit. You're okay with having softer messaging. You're okay with providing that value um, that then is going to build for the future. So find your key moments, build to those crescendos. The other thing that I can't emphasize enough is to triple check your work. If possible, it's always best for the person who writes and creates the content to not be the person that's QAing and proofing it before it goes out. It's always, always best to have minimum two different sets of eyes on something. And um, project management software is out there that you can utilize. My favorite is Asana, but I know that there are a lot of others, Trello, Monday. Um, there are a lot of different ones that are out there. And honestly, you can do it in an Excel document if you want. It can be a simple checklist. But what you need to check is, is the subject line right? Is the preview text okay, et cetera, et cetera? Am I sending it to the right list? Um, and related to that, always, always, always test on mobile devices. This is something that I see a lot of times that we get lazy or we don't think about. We create the content on desktop, we send it to ourselves on desktop, we look at it on desktop, and then we send it out to the majority of people who are gonna open it on a phone, right? So if you know who your audience is and what devices they're most likely to have, then find that device, have that device, and, and just double check and test it on there. Check, check all of the links, make sure the links are going to the right places, et cetera. Um, you know, depending on your business, it could be higher, but most businesses are sit in the 50 to 65% of people open email addresses on or emails on a mobile device. So just making sure that you're testing that and, and thinking about that when you're creating your content. And then finally, just staying true to your brand tone and voice in your email. So if you are a very personal one-on-one -on -one kind of person and you write emails from a very personal point of view, 
lean into that. If you are, um, you know, quick hits, just like, I'm just going to give you a few tips, lean into that. Um, I'm going to give you like, you know, really short emails. Like uh, I'm going to show you some examples, but like Kate Spade does this a lot where it's like really quick hits, just one thing, like an image and a button and that's it. So just stay true to your brand voice. You don't want to look like Walmart rolling back prices when your brand is a luxury brand and charge pre charges premium prices like the Ritz, right? So just stay true to that brand tone and voice. This is an example of a simple content cal calendar that I just wanted to give you guys an example of. So the blue bars are different emails that we have plotted out. And then we have, I challenge us anytime we create this content calendar, what's the main focus of the email? Are there two backup points? Who's the audience that it's going to? And what's the tone? So again, the tone helps us figure out how to build to that crescendo for, um, for those promotions and things like that. Again, this doesn't have to be fancy. You can do it in Excel. You can do it on a whiteboard. Um, just plan ahead and, and have a process in place to double and triple check your work before it goes out. The other thing that's going to help you is to create a few key templates that you can just swap out images and, um, and text in. You'd be surprised at how many people don't actually realize that the templates are all the same, um, but the images and texts are different. And, um, and so we're, I'm going to get to some templates as well. So visual hierarchy, again, thinking about that one hurdle at a time, the visual hierarchy and prioritiz prioritization of your messages is critical. And I'm going to let you just take a look at this for a minute. So as you guys probably looked at this, you're probably like, yeah, I did read that first. Yes, I did read that second. Um, there's a reason, right? And it's, it's visual hierarchy in design. And so I'm going to give you a few tips and tricks um, to do that. So these are a few a handful of, of emails that I find really successful. Um, obviously, the one in the middle is Kate Spade, and uh, it has a cute little gif in there. So um, movement's always really great. But if you look at the first two, they have this inverted triangle from a visual design hierarchy perspective. So the summer essentials, you have the single Nike swoosh, which is the brand at the top. You have your summer, summer essentials, which is big and bold and capital letters. So that's going to draw your attention first. And then you have the backup copy that's not bold and smaller, but it's drawing your attention. It's like, hey, here's where I want you to focus. Click here, shop men's. Kate Spade, same thing. That's drawing your eye down to the shop now, 30% off, code is cheers, shop now. This uh, Sweet Greens email is what I call a waterfall effect. So um, that's drawing your eye a little bit this way. And that's a good effect if you have a lot of information to communicate. Um, so you have like, they have all of these different salads that they wanna talk about. And it's good to break up your, um, your content with imagery as well. So if you have an image plus a little bit of text, and then I go to the next one, imagery plus a little bit of text, and that kind of takes me down the path. Another thing that this email does, you can't actually see it on this screen, but it has two buttons. So if you have a lot of content that you need to communicate, consider putting a button at the closer to the top and a button closer to the bottom, um, because that way, if somebody isn't interested in scrolling all the way down, then they'll still see it. And the last one is a little bit different. It's a welcome email from Starbucks. So it's really one key message. It's just saying, hey, welcome. We're happy you're here. And then it gives you a little bit of a choose your own adventure of three different places that you can go. And then finally, just um, back to mobile and thinking about that, different screen sizes are going to show your emails differently. So just remember that and consider that. So in almost every, every actually email builder that I've seen, um, I get frustrated with this all the time because I can't lock my content. I'm actually talking to the HubSpot product team about this in a couple of weeks, which I'm super excited about and hoping that they solve it for me. But, um, but your text is going to wrap differently on different screen sizes. So again, if you have, we have a very affluent female audience that are in their 30s and 40s. That's our main audience at Burke Williams. So we know that the majority of them are going to have iPhones. They're going to be on iOS. And a lot of them are probably going to have the newest one. So if you know what your audience demographic graphics are. A lot of times your email software will tell that to you or your um, website analytics actually will tell that to you. Google analytics will tell that to you as well. Um, so that can give you an idea and then just try to, to test on those phones as much as possible. The other thing that I can't stress enough, and this goes for websites as much as it goes for emails, is think about what's above the fold. So that term comes from back in newspaper days where you had a whole big newspaper, but you fold it in half so people only see the first part of it. So above the fold in your phone is what you see when you first open the email. Make sure that that information is either everything they need to do 
and everything they need to know in that email, or it's giving you a hint that something's down further and you need to scroll. So you can do that by, um, you know, showing a top part of an image or a top part of, um, you know, a piece of content or um, copy or whatever that may be. Just make sure that like ask yourself, what do they, what can they do just opening the email without having to scroll? And then how many times do they need to scroll to get to see the entirety of the thing and making sure that you're giving them a little peek into what's down below so they know that there's more. Hey everybody, Jessica Lachance here. Do you want more business education for your fitness studio or wellness business? Subscribe to our YouTube channel or our email newsletters and we'll see you here soon.